Hello and welcome to the Python and Django Full Stack Web Developer Bootcamp. My name is Jose Portilla and I will be your instructor for this course. I teach over 100,000 students on Udemy and also work as a professional programming instructor where I have trained some of the top Fortune 500 companies to use the latest technologies. I'm excited to finally share a virtual version of my latest Python and Django Full Stack Web Development Training course. In this course, we will be covering the entire full stack of web development, so you can build an entire website from the ground up. The course is designed to be a complete reference and source for you. Each section is intelligently organized based on topic, so regardless of your experience level, you can easily access the information you need. Whether you're a beginner who will go through the entire course, or a seasoned professional who only wants to reference later section, the course is designed for you. We'll start off by learning about front-end web technologies including HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, JavaScript, and jQuery. Afterwards, we'll be focusing on learning Python, Django, and SQL for the back end of our web applications. Once we feel comfortable using these technologies, we'll start building clones of popular websites so you can practice your new skills in a realistic setting. Each section has an assessment and exercises to practice your new skills so you can always keep your new abilities sharp. The course is packed with content, including over 100 video lectures, explanatory code references, and concept presentation slides. You will also get access to our online Q&A forums, where thousands of students and I are happy to help answer any questions you may have along the way. Upon completion of this course, you can get a certificate of completion to post on your LinkedIn profile to show off to potential employers. You can try this course risk-free as it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Get ready to become a master web developer and launch your career to the next level. Enroll today and I will see you inside the course. Check out the curriculum page for full information on all the content in the course. Hello everyone and welcome to the course overview lecture. As a quick note, I have a favor to ask of you. Please watch this entire video lecture, regardless if you've already taken multiple courses on Udemy or even multiple courses by me, or if you're brand new to Udemy or brand new to online learning, in general, please watch this entire lecture video. It will really help your course experience be a lot smoother. Thank you. Okay, continuing on, we're going to talk about three main things in this lecture. We'll talk about general course information, how to get the course notes and files, and then how to get help during the course. First off, a huge thank you for enrolling. It really means the world to me to get messages from students every day telling them I helped them in the careers, help them solve a problem at work, or that they just really enjoyed the course. So thank you again for enrolling. I'm really going to try my best to make sure you have a good experience. First off, let's discuss some general tips for getting the best experience with this course. You probably noticed that I speak at a pretty steady and deliberate pace, so feel free to speed up the videos. You can check for a speed icon on the bottom tab. In fact, you can speed up this video right now. I would personally probably be watching these videos at about 1.5 or 2x speed, but that's my style. If English is not your first language, you can probably also slow down the videos. So do whatever speed feels right to you. If a video ever appears blurry, make sure to check that you're viewing the video in high definition. If you want to download the videos for offline viewing, you can do that with the Udemy app. Any technical platform issues you may encounter, please contact support at udemy.com. Technical platform issues can be things like having trouble posting to the Q&A forums, having trouble logging into your account, or having trouble viewing the actual videos. Those are technical platform issues. I can't help you too much there, so please contact support at udemy.com if you experience those type of problems. Again, the course is self-paced and you get lifetime access to the materials, and that includes any updates. Also, upon completion of the course, you can unlock a certificate for your LinkedIn profile, and you can check out the FAQ lecture, which is the very next lecture, for more information on how to unlock that certificate. Now let's talk about how to get the course materials. You can download all the files as a .zip from this lecture, the FAQ lecture, or the installation lecture. That's this lecture, the next lecture, and the lecture after that. It's the same .zip file, so any one of those lectures is fine. It's saved as a resource, so you should see a little blue resource tab open up while you're watching the actual video. Just click on that and then download the .zip file. Future additions to this course will get their own .zip file in the relevant section, and I will also re-upload an updated .zip to these three lectures. So what I mean by that is if later on in the future I add a new clone to this course, maybe we make a clone of facebook.com, 
then I will create two zip files. I will re-upload an updated version of the whole zip file, but I will also make a separate zip file just for that section. That way you don't have to re-download all the notes every time new material is added to this course. Also as a quick note, sometimes a built-in unzipping program on your computer may not work for unzipping a file. Please try another program before posting to the Q&A forums if you're having trouble unzipping files. Thanks. All right, now let's talk about how to approach the course. This course is divided into sections that lead into each other. Each section can be visited independent of the others, but they also assume knowledge of all the concepts covered in previous lectures. As a very high level overview general curriculum of what this course has, we first talk about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and then we continue talking about the document object model and jQuery, and that's really the front end half of the course. Then the second half of the course discusses the Python programming language, how to work with Django and SQL, and then after that we have website clone projects. Also, keep in mind that we do not assume any previous knowledge. So you can take this course even if you have zero programming experience. We won't ever assume that you've encountered any other technology before. However, that means if you already have experience, you may want to read through the code notes first. Otherwise, you may be viewing video lectures that just go over things you already know. Again, this is trying to be a careful balance for people who have never programmed before and experienced programmers. So beginners should follow through the course in order. More experienced developers should probably visit the curriculum page and decide what the best starting point is for them. And be honest with yourself, if you start to have trouble with a certain section, you may want to go back a section and review that material. Okay, now let's talk about how to get help during the course. Okay, so let's discuss the steps you should take whenever you need help during the course. The first thing you should do, especially if you run into a programming error, is use Google and Stack Overflow as tools to help you solve that issue. A big part of being a developer is learning how to answer your own questions by using Google and using Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow is just a website where you can post questions and other programmers will help you out. But a lot of times, almost 90% of the time, your question has been asked by someone else and you'll already find an answer through Google and Stack Overflow. If you still can't find it there, you may want to check out the FAQ lecture, where I will be posting commonly asked questions that pertain to the course. If you still can't find it there, and your question is more specific to something in the course, search the Q&A forums for previous posts. It's likely that someone's already asked a similar question to yours. While you're viewing a lecture, you can also look at the bottom tab and you should see a Q&A button. You can click that and that will take you to Q&A posts that actually pertain to the specific lecture that you are watching. If you still can't find the help, not to worry. Post a new question on the Q&A forums. Please include what you've tried, your code, and as much information as possible. That way, the students and I can quickly help you out. Here are some useful ways you can share your code online with us. You can use codepen.io, codepen.co, a gist on GitHub, or even just a plain screenshot, or you can actually copy and paste with formatting your code onto the Udemy Q&A forums. Choose whatever you prefer. As far as some general information for the question and answer forums for this course, you can usually respect the reply within 24 hours. And other students reply often, so often a reply comes a lot faster than 24 hours. But I check the Q&A forums at least once a day, usually more than that. You may also just get a quick link reply. So if I see a question very similar to yours answered on Stack Overflow, I may just reply with the link. If you're still confused by that or that haven't given you enough information, feel free to just continue the thread asking follow-up questions. I'm always happy to help you out. Also, remember to say thank you, especially if another student has helped you out and replied to your question. It really helps build a great community of students answering each other's questions. Also, it's a great idea for you to go to the Q&A forums and see if you can help out other students in the course. It's a really great skill to have and it really helps your own understanding to answer other people's questions. As a final note, there are many ways to program, and that includes the choice of your development environment, the styling of the code, your programming choices, etc. I don't want you to ever feel locked into the choices we make in this course. Feel free to explore other options, and also feel free to share them as well. If you prefer another IDE, you prefer another library, you have different programming styling from your experience, that's totally okay. Don't ever feel that you have to do exactly what we do in this course. And again, just a huge thank you for enrolling in this course. 
I'm so happy you have enrolled and I get to help you on your journey of becoming a web developer. I'll see you inside the course. Thanks everyone. Hello everyone and welcome to the setup and installation lecture. Before we get started, I wanted to note that there are many options for choosing your development environment and your browser. In this course, we're going to be using the Atom Text Editor and Google Chrome. If you're very experienced with another IDE, that's an integrated development environment, feel free to go ahead and use it. Maybe you already have a lot of experience with the Sublime Text Editor or PyCharm, that's totally okay. Feel free to use whatever feels comfortable for you if you already have a lot of experience with a certain IDE although I still highly recommend you try out Atom. I've learned to really enjoy it, and it works really well with all the material in this course. As far as the browser choice goes, we do ask that you please use Chrome. It is by far the most popular choice for web developers, and I also wanna make sure that the sites that I run in this course will also run on your computer. Again, in this lecture, we're going to show you where you can install Atom Text Editor from and give you a quick tour of it. Let's get started. Go to Google in your browser. Okay, so in your browser, if you don't have Google Chrome yet, what you should do is go to google.com slash chrome, or just Google search for the term Google Chrome, and eventually you'll find this page right here, which is google.com slash chrome. There may be a bunch of information about their Chromebooks, which are their physical products. What we really want is just Google Chrome itself. So you can click here on download, click for personal computers, and then click on the download link for the web browser. Okay, so that's how you can get Google Chrome. It's just a web browser. I'm sure many of you are, or most of you, are already familiar with it. Then, to actually get the text editor for this course, go to atom.io. That's A-T-O-M dot I-O. And this is the Atom text editor that we're using for the course. And the reason we use Atom text editor is because it can support cross platforms. That's OS X, Windows, Linux. It has a built-in package manager so you can search for and install new packages. You can even create your own packages and plugins all from within Atom. It has smart auto completion that we'll be using a lot during the course. File system browser, multiple panes, find and replace features, it has a lot of stuff that we're going to be using often throughout the course. Now other text editors also have these exact same features, so Atom is not unique in these aspects, but it works really well for what we're going to be doing for the course. The main reason I really like Atom though is if you scroll all the way down, there's two really interesting things about it. The first thing that I really like is that it's totally open source. So it's totally free, it's open source. And if you really wanted to make a change to the Atom Text Editor, you can make a contribution and help improve Atom Text Editor. And then the second thing, which is kind of uh, more of a curiosity slash really interesting aspect of it, is that Atom itself is actually built with a lot of the front end technologies that we learn in this course. It runs with HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and a JavaScript library called node.js. And then it runs all that on a framework called Electron, which allows you to use web technologies to actually build desktop applications. So that's just a little side fact. We won't be dealing with Electron at all in this course, but maybe after you're done taking this course, you're interested in developing desktop applications. Well, you'll be able to use a lot of the skills in this course to build something like Atom. So that's just a quick side note. To actually install Atom, it's quite simple. Just click here on the installation button. If you're on Windows, this will download an executable file. You just double click it, run through the installation process. If you're on Mac OS, this will be something like a DMG file. Again, you double click it, run through the installation process. And then if you're on Ubuntu, I believe it's a .tar file that you can just then unpack. Okay, so let me hop over to the Atom text editor and show you what it looks like. Okay, so once you've opened Atom for the first time, you should see a welcome guide. And this is just a really useful guide for you. It has a bunch of information about the various features of Atom, such as how to open a project, install a package, choose a theme. If you don't like the default color theme, you can just click here on choose a theme and then open the theme picker and then check the other themes out. You can even customize the styling and you can do anything with uh, CSS that we learned later on in this course. So that's pretty cool as well. And then you can actually add snippets, learn keyboard shortcuts, I would recommend you check out these keyboard shortcuts. I'll be telling you the most useful ones as we continue throughout the course. But the main thing I want to show you is how to open a project. So if you click on open a project, it'll open a file opener. So you just click open a project here, and then you can select any folder you want. So hopefully by now you've downloaded the files that go with this course, and then you can just 
add that, select that folder, and add it to the actual file path. So let me show you what that looks like. I'll just select this folder right here. And here I can see I've selected a folder, Django Lectures has some files in it. If you want to open a file, you just click on it, and then it opens up the file itself. And here you can see I have some HTML code. And that's basically what we're going to be doing throughout the rest of the course. We're just going to be running through your project folders and then adding files here. And if you ever want to collapse this directory, all you have to do is do command or control backslash, and then you can open and close that. All right, so that's the very basics of Atom. That's really all you need to know. Throughout the rest of the course, we're going to be showing you more and more features of Atom and then playing around with it a lot more. Okay, thanks everyone, and I will see you at the next lecture.